Good morning, Good morning everybody. everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ram. That was Asaph Adonai on piano. Asaph, what song is that? That is called Shot in the Dark from the movie with Peter Sellers. Oh, uh, nice. yeah. That, that, was that. A, that was a pretty good movie, for yep. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shot in the dark. great times, yeah. great yeah. times. Mm-hmm. Well, it's Monday. <laughs> we hope that you all had a great weekend. And, you know, we're here to kick off your week, kick yes. off our show. We're going to start off with some weather. Yes, the weather is looking pretty rainy pretty much this whole entire week. You, yeah. uh, your current temperatures are 39 degrees outside. Um, it's already raining outside, um, 80% chance of showers. Um, of course, it is obviously already raining when I came in this morning. Um, tonight, you have lower chance of showers, but it's basically continued that way throughout the whole entire week. But one thing um, was interesting because last night was a big moon. There was a it large was. full moon last night. It was, it was a like super moon. yellow. Mm-hmm. It was called it the Hunter's. Like, it was called the Hunter's Moon. It was, and it was a super moon. It was crazy. Yeah. And you just told me that there are people in yeah. the neighborhood just like going crazy, yeah, party, I, party, and everything. Yeah. I live on the north side, and it's usually very, very quiet and not really a whole lot of activity, especially at oh. night. And everyone was like drinking beer, turning up their music, partying, just like moving around. It was like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday, and my neighbor was partying, and I was very confused. <laughs> but I went to bed, so I missed the moon, because normally I'll wake up early in hopes I'll see it in the morning, and it was all rainy this morning, and I was really oh. sad. But there were people, I woke up at like 5.45, there were people still making noise outside. Yep. Super moon makes everyone super crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> super, but, um, super. I'll and, be here all weekend. Yeah, all that stuff. Okay, but of course, I do have a nice short animation film nice. special for you guys. I made it last week, um, and it shows about the frustrations of um, ordering coffee. So let's take a look. Um, yes, I would like an Americano. Uh, Excuse me. Excuse me? Hello? Hello? Where'd you go? Oh, excuse me. Hey, yo, man, what's up? Oh, yeah. Uh, what? Really? Huh? Yeah, this imaginary phone is sick. Uh. I cannot believe this is happening. Hey, frustrated guy. What's wrong? Uh. This guy will not take my order. I'm leaving. Yo, dude, wait. Uh, about time. <laughs> Yo, what's up? I'm Sam. Welcome to Head Coffee. Uh, what, what can I do? I want an Americano, but you ignore me. So you go talk on your imaginary phone. Whoa, bro. I guess I didn't see you. Didn't see me? I was standing right here waiting for you to take my order, and you were too busy on your phone. Whoa, sorry, bro. Real talk, real talk. Wait, hold on a second. You've got to be kidding me. Hey, yo, Denise, what's going on, bro? Yeah? <laughs> that was good. <laughs> um, Scott always has problems ordering coffee for some reason. He complains about I, it's, it all the it's time. It's terrible. <laughs> like, every time I would go get coffee, there's always something that happens. Like, that most of the time, mad. there's, like, nobody there yeah. to take yeah. my order. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. I guess I'm not going to get anything. Thank you. But over the weekend, uh, MCAT did a live stream. So if you guys were uh, watching um, MCAT or, uh, or subscribed to us on our Facebook page, you'd be able to get a notification saying that we were live streaming. So um, this was the thing we were live streaming over the weekend. It was Pianissimo, and it was brought on through the uh, University of Montana School of Music Pianos Department. So here's a little taste of that, and when we come back, I'll talk a little bit more about um, what's going to be new on MCAT. So of course you can pretty much see this anytime on YouTube on MCAT's live stream. So of course, uh, you know, the live stream recorded live to our YouTube channel. So if you also uh, subscribe to um, MCAT on YouTube, you just basically go to our uh, nice little page, as you can see here, and you just hit subscribe. Of course, we subscribed. It would be really awkward if we weren't subscribed. Oh, weird, but of course, yeah. if uh, if you want to find out more information, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. 
a long convoluted title that we're too cheap to buy the uh, the license for wakeupmozilla.com. Um, <laughs> you can also like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmozilla. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on our Facebook page, and to find out more information, just check us out on MCAT.org. Yep, but of course, uh, new to uh, MCAT this fall is a brand new series, and Ooh. here's a little taste of that. Godzilla and Neo were filmed in front of a live studio audience. Hey Godzilla, where's my medication? Medication? I thought those were little people. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have that job interview go. Well, they said that I couldn't work there because I kept eating all the pizzas. <laughs> How are you going to pay rent this month? I ate a man and took his wallet. <laughs> Godzilla. Had me laughing out loud. That was really, really, really funny. Well, that's why the laugh track's in there, so it tells people when they should laugh. I laughed when there wasn't laugh tracks. <laughs> I'm an independent woman. <laughs> Uh, but of course, uh, that, that I don't know if that's actually coming. That actually might come from something. But anyways, uh, we do actually have some new new programming, and I'm going to end my segment, because I had a lot of videos I, I wanted to share with They're you guys funny. today. Yeah, that was and good. Um, here is what's new on MCAT tonight. It's the Fringe Festival. It's continuing. We have an ongoing series. It's a short run series that will happen until, I think, by the, by the end of November, mm -hmm. and you can check that out. And then, of course, Circles of Support, part four. Ooh. Great. <laughs> I've got a better appreciation of what I've done to my, uh, you know, to my daughters and and the, and the girls in my family. And he said, "I'm going to have to go away and really think deeply about that." It was beautiful. It was great restorative justice in a non-traditional way too. And we should never assume that when we're talking to volunteers or, for that matter, to people in this room, that there isn't somebody in the room. There always is somebody in the room who is a survivor of sexual violence. And we need to be sensitive to that. Hi, you guys. We're back. And before I've got any, um, some community events, I've got some news stories for you. So up first, this I found all my news stories on CNN. Uh, the world's oldest panda died in captivity on Sunday. She was 114 years old in human years and uh, died at the age of 38. But she was living in captivity for the past 17 years. But they found her in the jungle, and then they brought her to the zoo. So it looks like they found her, yeah. And then brought her to the Hong Kong, let's see, Ocean Park Zoo in 1999. Wow. Yeah, so that's kind of cool, but yeah. it's too bad that she died. But she 114 did years in human years as a panda is a long time. Yeah, did you guys uh, get a chance to see that? Uh, there's a YouTube video online that I suggest you guys check out. It's where they basically got all the pandas that were born in the last two years. Uh, you know, cute little cub mm -hmm. pandas. Mm -hmm. And they put them up on display. Cute! Yep. Oh, so they like roll around and are cute they're, and stuff? They're just like rolling around and it's like, Bleh. I'm a panda. Yeah, yeah. no. I don't know what they do. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a panda. <laughs> I'm cute, give me money. Yeah. Um, but her mate is now the world's uh, second oldest male giant panda in captivity, wow. and he's 30 years old. But now he's a widow panda. <clears throat> Widower. 
Okay. And then um, my next trending news story that I wanted to talk about is that Hillary Clinton is leading in the polls against her Republican rival, Donald Trump. It seems that she's leading um, by 8% among likely voters. So, uh, yeah. And then it looks like the average poll shows that Clinton has 47% of support from likely voters. Trump is at 39%. Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson is at 7%. And Jill Stein is at 2%. Yeah. So, um... That, yep, those are the polls. Yeah. And then my last event or trending news article that I want to talk about is Robin Williams. I guess he was an avid cyclist. And so he has 87 bikes that are up for auction. Wow. So you guys can check that out. That's at paddle8.com. And so he's got racing bikes. He has road bikes. He has really weird bikes, too. I guess he has like a little runt mini bike as well as a Schwinn unicycle. Yeah, so Robin Williams, avid cyclist. You guys can go to paddle8.com. And that lasts until October 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Wow. So it'd be like 11 for us. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of cool. I didn't know that he was such an avid cyclist. Yeah. So you guys check that out. But I got all of my stories from CNN. So that's kind of, yeah, little news stories I thought was interesting. <laughs> Scott. Okay, <laughs> now we're moving on. Now we've got some events. <laughs> So, starting at 9.30 a.m. over at Mismo Gymnastics is a family fun time. Uh, this is where an open gym for ages walking to 12 years of age. They offer supervised and safe environment full of obstacle courses, foam pits, and trampolines. And then we have our preschool play group at Ruth Zucker Sports Center at 11. This is for ages walking to five years. They set up different activities and stations throughout the gym, and parents of children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. Muscat Monday is at Montgomery Distillery starting at noon. A dollar from each cocktail sold goes back to a nonprofit from the Missoula, Montana area. Bridge Group is at the Senior Center at 1 o'clock. This is their beginner's brush up group. And then at the Public Library, they have computer electronics in their maker space starting at 3 o'clock until 6. You can learn how to use their equipment or work on a project of your choice. Wordplay is at the base of the Warehouse Mall at 4 o'clock. Then at 5 o'clock, is Raising the Dead, the live recording shows The Grateful Dead from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. They also have happy hour, trivia, video, and audio show. There's an open mic night at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. Also at 6 are meditation classes on the northeast corner of McLeod and Higgins in the University District. And then at the University in the UM Gallagher Business Building, room 222, they have a new to Medicare workshop. Um, <coughs> this is for those approaching age 65 or eligible for Medicare due to a disability. You can find out about important enrollment dates, uh, but yeah, find out about, uh, about important enrollment dates as well as other things that you need to do. Um, and that's at 6 o'clock tonight. At the Public Library, it's Beginning Word, also at 6 o'clock. So this is a learning how to use a word processing on a computer. Um, and that'll be in their computer classroom. And then over at Mask Studio, they have Matt Pilates. It starts at 6.15. And then at 7, at the Downtown Dance Collective, they've got their adult jazz dance class. And then we have a few bands tonight. The Top Out Lounge is hosting the Felis Brothers. They'll be on at 8. And then Erica Western Ma we Wennerstrom of the Heartless Bastards will be at the Missoula Win Winery and Vineyard at 8 o'clock. And then Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends, as well as Magpies, will be at Stage 112 at 9. So that's what's going on in your community. Up next, we're switching gears. We've got Musical Notes with ASAP Out of Night. When chaos, spelled K-A-O-S, reigns, there's only one man for the job, Maxwell Smart. But does this updated version of the beloved bumbling 60s super spy series get smart stay true to the spirit of its predecessor? That may be for another story. You'll have to see the movie and judge for yourself. But this is not about the movie. One of the things I find interesting, perhaps fun, is when you do a story on someone, you may not necessarily know who they are, but you know what they do. One such person on today's musical notes, best known for his portrayal as Thaddeus, the chief of control, a secret US government counterintelligence agency based in Washington, DC, in the 1965 to 1970 NBC and CBS television series, Get Smart, we're talking about Edward Cutbert Platt, known to the world as Edward Platt, and there he is on the screen, looking very handsome there in his younger years, and you may recognize him. Now this shot here obviously is before his uh, stride on Get Smart, but let's talk about him for a second. 
Edward Platt was an American actor best known for his betrayal of the chief in the 1965 to 1970 series Get Smart. And um, Platt was born in Staten Island, New York. He studied at the Juilliard School of Music. He also attended Princeton University. And he served in the United States Army during World War II a powerful, operatically trained baritone voice. He made his debut on Broadway in the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical Allegro. And also he got his first film role in 1955 with uh, James Dean in the movie called Rebel Without a Cause. And of course Natalie Wood is also in that movie. In 1959 he played Cary Grant's attorney in a movie called North by Northwest. And then as far as television, he's appeared in television shows like Perry Mason with Raymond Burr, The Rifleman with Chuck Connors, Rawhide, Bonanza, The Dick Van Dyke Show, and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. But he hit his stride when he was cast to play the chief in the espionage parody of Get Smart. And some of the other shows that he did, he did a show, a, an attorney show that passed called Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law, for those who may remember that. He also appeared in Love American Style and The Odd Couple, Oscar Madison's Boss, in an episode called Oscar's New Life. And my final words about Pratt, some of his movies, he appeared in a film in 1949 called I Was a Male War Bride. <laughs> And also, um, as I mentioned, the 1955 Rebel, Rebel Without a Cause. In 1956, he appeared in a film called Rock Pretty Baby and Designing Women. And finally, in 1960, he appeared in Pollyanna with uh, the Haley Twins. And he also, in 1961, appeared in Snow White and the Three Stooges. <laughs> so this man has done a variety of all kinds of television and movies throughout his career, but is this picture here, he'll always be best remembered for playing the chief on Get Smart. And there he is, and on that note, I will stop. Nice, thanks, Asa. Sure. Yes. That was musical notes with ASAP. Uh -huh. It was. And it looks like we've got some Tuesday programming, um, new and Epcot. Yes. What can you tell us about that, Scott? Yes, we. Uh, it is the uh, last best conference. Uh, actually, no, it's not the last best conference. Actually, yes, it is the last best conference. <laughs> it's part two, and it's uh, Headwaters. Uh, no, it's not Headwaters. It's uh, Bear Bait Dance. What is it? It's one so of the da it's some dancing It thing. is the last best conference, and it is Headwaters. Yes. <laughs> There's just so much going on here. I, I, like, I'm trying to describe it because I've so many, seen so many dancing things that I just don't know what label to put onto it. Oh, okay. So anyways, uh, here is a whole bunch of new programming happening on your Tuesday. So we have a full uh, prethra of, uh, of shows on Monday and Tuesday, of course. I think I said that right. Anyways, here is uh, this, and when we come back, we'll have Noelle with events. Answers because there aren't easy answers to some of these. But one of the ones I put up here was... Um, are we trying to save lives today or are we trying to save lives tomorrow? And that sort of, I'll explain how that becomes a question because that's, that's an awful choice, right? Um, and, and I'll give you some examples of how it is an awful choice that we deal with something. And we look at how this network damage I is uh, affected in this uh, child and how this network damage then rela relates to all of these different aspects of what we can do in uh, imaging, from structural to functional uh, imaging. Tomorrow night only on channel 189. 
Um, and then we've got events for tomorrow for Tuesday. So starting at 9 a.m. over at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a working with digital photos on a Mac class. Um, so you can create gorgeous photos and then upload them on your Mac and then put them on social media. So they'll show you how to do all that. At the Public Library, they've got open hours in their makerspace. That starts at 10 a.m. from 10 to 6. You can work on a project of your choice and learn how to use their equipment. Tiny Tales is also at the Public Library at 10.30. This is for babies ages birth through three years. And they sing songs, hear finger plays, hear nursery rhymes, hear stories. And at the Children's Museum of Missoula at 11, they have pumpkin marble painting. Um, and so they're going to be creating some, it's pretty much just going to be making pumpkins, you know, for the little kids. It'll be fun. Um, and then at the Public Library at noon, the Missoula League of Women Voters is hosting an hour-long discussion on the Electoral College, uh, which is somewhat of a mystery to a lot of us, um, even though it's been around for over 200 years. Yeah, so they're going to give us all the insight on that at the Public Library tomorrow at noon. And at 315, Zootown Arts Community Center has got a uh, kind of like a class and a workshop. It starts uh, Tuesdays from 315 to 530 from October 18th till November 22nd. It's going to be $85 for members and $95 for non-members, and it's called Storytelling Spectacular. And so students will illustrate their own stories using a variety of mediums, including drawing, painting, charcoal, sculpture, and more. The Public Library has got their Young Adult Volunteer Orientation that starts at 3.30 until 4.30. And then the Missoula Art Museum has their After School Art Adventure at 3.45. Um, so this will be young artists working with Bev Blueckert on a series of 2D and 3D projects. At the University of Montana at 5, they've got a thing called Chinatown Hall. And so what it is, it's going to be the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations 10th Annual Chinatown Hall. So it'll be a live webcast to Missoula, and they'll answer questions regarding both current and historical challenges and opportunities faced by the U.S.-China relations. And I do have a little thing to say about this as well, because uh, uh, Montana is very close to China. Yeah, sure. it's weird. It's getting a lot closer and closer, especially since our... Also, since our uh, former Senator Max Baucus is ambassador to China right now oh, really? to the United States. So that's one of the connections a lot stronger. But of course, Brian Schweitzer was the one who really uh, pushed for uh, the beef, mm -hmm. basically. And it was like a bidding war between uh, Japan and America, between you know our, our Angus beef here versus their like Kobe beef. Oh, interesting. And of course, Montana won. Yeah. Huh. So that, so Montana is like, uh, China, uh, China's biggest export of meat is not from Montana. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. That's crazy. So okay. yeah, Chinese relations, cool. uh, it's definitely something to, a look, lot stronger. Look, to look for in the next five, ten years. Yeah, so it's a lot stronger than any of us thought, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, if you guys want to learn more about that, like I said, the University of Montana, I'm sure it'll be in the um, UC Theater, and so that'll be at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Cool, thanks, Scott. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, cool. Well, moving on. We've got Fall from the Parks, it starts at 5, it's going to be in Ben Hughes Park tomorrow. And then at Mask Studio, they've got a hula hooping class, it starts at 5.30. And then at 6 o'clock, over at Moonlight Kitchens, which I don't have an address for that, I'm sorry you guys, but they're doing Salsa Canning Workshop. Um, and so this will teach you how to, you know, they'll teach you how to can some salsas, make some salsas. What they'll do is they're going to learn the steps of a hot water bath canning. And so I can imagine that's a lot different from other canning, so that's what you'll learn. And then at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, you're going to learn baking from scratch. They've got a class that starts at 6 o'clock from 6 to 9, only tomorrow night, and it's $42. And they're going to bake from scratch. So it looks like they're going to make raspberry fruit tart with a pistachio crust, double chocolate layer cake with a hazelnut frosting, and, uh, and lemon, and a lavender shortbread cookies. That sounds amazing. At the Public Library, they've got their Community Creative Writing Workshop in their makerspace. It starts at 6 o'clock, so it's a drop-in environment focused on the Creative Writing Workshop process. At the Zoo Town Arts Community Center, they've got their Collaborative Parade Prop Building still happening. It starts at 6. They're building uh, props and floats for the... Uh, the um, Day of the Dead Parade. Thank you. Day of the Dead Parade. I almost said Grateful Dead Parade, but that wasn't right. <laughs> so I stopped. So the Day of the Dead Parade, which will be uh, at the very beginning of November. 
At the public library, we've got System Check at 6.30. This is our official player gamers club for ages 19 and under. They have card games, board games, video games, everything you could want. And then at the Good Food Store at 6.30, they're going to be making winter squash, butternut, and beyond. So it's going to be like a squash cooking class. They'll teach you how to make a variety of things out of that. That's only $35, and it starts at 6.30. And then we've got uh, Bugs and Brews, Br Bugs Amongst Us. That's going to be at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium at 6.30. And so Bugs and Brews are pretty much, it's like a discussion and a lecture about bugs, but you also get some beer with it. So it's only 5 bucks. You get one beer included in that. I think they'll have more for purchase. And then they just give a lecture about bugs. So this one is all the bugs that hang out on our body and, and our bugs. Yeah. And so uh, Pam Whitney, uh, who is a part of the infectious disease, who is an infectious disease specialist for Missoula County, will be giving the lecture on that. And then my last event for Tuesday, Honey Honey is playing at the Top Hat Lounge at 7.30 and they're a folk band. So as always, you guys, you guys can check out MissoulaEvents.net, uh, the University of Montana website, The Independent, and The Missoulian for more events. I always get everything that I talk about from MissoulaEvents.net. Cool. Yeah. So that's it. Nice. Happy Monday, everyone. Yes. <laughs> and it is a busy next couple of days. It really You know, is. you can stay inside and watch MCAT and just, like, forget about your worries. Yeah. Or you can go out and... Um, Look at bugs and drink some beer. That sounds fun. You can play some video games, drink some beer, look at bugs, learn how to make some squash. Yes. Sounds wild. But we have an art clip from um, the Clay Studio of mm -hmm. Missoula, and then after that we're going to have Wake Up Sports with Kimson yeah. and Cole. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back after this. The Spartans had a tough road game at Billings West. Uh, it was going to be a tall order going in. And Billings West Golden Bears 28. Spartans 0 was the result on senior night for Billings West. West defensive lineman Hunter Wheel had three sacks and a fumble recovery, one of two that Billings West was able to recover. Uh, West quarterback Bryson Deming had three passing touchdowns, two of them to Chaz Mur Maddock and one of them to twin brother Braden Deming, an 80-yard bomb in the second half. West had two red zone interceptions, which stalled Sentinel drives and um, eliminated the possibility of points and momentum for the Spartans in a tough road contest. Caleb Nelson and Elijah Perry had those picks. And two fumble recoveries, five sacks, uh, overall a dominant performance for the defense of West. Credit Missoula Sentinel's defense, though, it was only 7 nothing at halftime. So it's not like Sentinel's defense just rolled over. Uh, this was a game for at least the first half. And for part of the second half as well, part of what uh, made a huge difference down the stretch was Mitch Roberts went off the field with an ankle injury, starting quarterback for the Spartans midway through the third quarter. And then sophomore quarterback Rylan Ort took over for the rest of the stretch. Played pretty well, but the Spartans fall to 4-4 four four on the season. 
Phillies West moves to 7-1 and one, is one of the best teams in the state of Montana. Sentinels not quite there yet, but they still look to be on track for the playoffs. Yeah, they're going to make the playoffs. You know, they're going to finish the season out at 6-4, and four, I believe. They get a forfeit win against Hellgate, and then they're going to um, host Kalispell Flathead at the end of the season, a game that I believe they should win. This was a tall order in this game. Um, you can't turn the ball over three times when you're inside the 20-yard line. Um, it just makes it for a difficult time all the way around. Um, but give them credit for sustaining drives. It's just being able to finish the drives. And it's tough. It's a, it's a tough road game. It was a long bus trip. Um, you're playing against one of the better teams in the state of Montana and the Billings West Golden Bears. Um, Billings West deserved to win. I, I thought that they were going to win. They're seven and one now. Um, they look to be that solidified number two seed um, going into the playoffs, which is huge for them because they'll get a couple home games in the playoffs depending on how they do. Um, but yeah, they look to be one of the, the teams um, to perhaps make the state championship game. Um, but looking at Sentinel, again, I mean, it was going to be a tall order to win this game. They've won three road games this year. They've done pretty well. They only won one road game the year before that. Um, but yeah, Mitch Roberts went out with an ankle injury. Uh, Bryson Deming played terrific in this game. He had three touchdown passes. He had an 80-yard touchdown to his twin brother, uh, Braden. So that was big for them. And yeah, Billings West really, their defense has carried them to this point in the season going 7-1. and one. Uh, They had a one-point victory over Missoula Big Sky, 35-34. But other than that, they've been playing some really clean football. And it's going to be tough to even go through them as well when the playoffs come. But Sentinel, uh, 500 right now. Um, they look to be potentially the 7 and the 6 seed. You'll get into the standings here in a bit. But um, definitely made some strides this year as a team. And I think the coaches definitely have to be very proud of, of where this team is right now. Um, unfortunately, couldn't get on the scoreboard against Billings West, and that was tough. But again, a lot to be gained from a game like this. And hopefully they can just uh, use it as uh, motivation moving forward. There's still a zero in the loss column for Billy Senior, 8-0 now after a 30-13 win at CMR. But they were down 10 to nothing at one point in that game. They were able to make some adjustments, especially at halftime, and really assert themselves uh, and remind everybody that they're the class of the conference. <clears throat> Kalispell Glacier is 7-1 after a 55-21 win uh, hosting Butte. Billings West, 7-1 after the 28-0 win against Sentinel. Bozeman, 6-2 after a 28-11 win against Great Falls. Helena, 5-3, the Missoula Hellgate forfeit, essentially a bye week for them. Missoula Big Sky, 33-14 win against Skyview on their home field. Big Sky has a heck of a stretch coming up in this next two weeks. They're at Helena Capital, which looks like a playoff team after starting the season pretty rough, and then they're at Kalispell Glacier on the Eagles. Missoula Sentinel has the Missoula Hellgate forfeit uh, win coming up, and then they host Flathead to end the regular season. Helena Capital, as we just mentioned a little bit, 4-4 four and four after a 30-20 to 20 win hosting Flathead this past Friday. Helena Capital, the Bruins defense especially, has helped them claw their way back into the playoff picture. They host Big Sky, and then they're at Butte. Great Falls CMR is 3-5, and five. Kalispell Flathead is also 3-5, and five. and they play Glacier in a crosstown rivalry matchup, which will be a tough, tough game for them, and then they'll be at Sentinel to end the regular season. Butte's 2-6, and six. Billing Skyview's 1-7, and seven. Great Falls is 1-7, and seven. Missoula Hellgate not playing varsity football this season. So Missoula Sentinel specifically, a chance to get healthy with the Missoula Hellgate forfeit essentially being a bye week before they host uh, Flathead. And Billings Senior, Kalispell Glacier, Billings West, Bozeman, Helena, Big Sky, Sentinel, two Missoula teams, and Helena Capital, all those eight teams, the, the seedings kind of still have to shake out, but those look to be your eight AA playoff teams this season. Yeah, Sentinel getting the bye week, so it's a good chance for them just to get healthy again. And um, yeah, just finish out the season strong. Again, I feel like they're going to get six and four at the end of the year, possibly be that seven seed or six seed. I think the best draw for them really is Glacier. I do believe that. I feel like um, they match up better against Glacier than Billings West. It's going to be either one of those two teams that we're probably going to end up playing. But I feel like that would be the best matchup for them. It was a close game last time. It was only that one point overtime defeat. So uh, moving forward, hopefully, um, you know, Sentinel, who knows in the playoffs and what can happen. Um, they can make some noise. I'm definitely not ruling them out to possibly pull an upset off in the playoffs for sure. Um, but looking at this team overall, great year. Dane Oliver, great job with the kids. Um, they 
took some steps forward this year, and they're going to make the postseason um, for the second time in three years. 20, 2013 was the last time Missoula Sentinel made the playoffs. They looked to be in position to do just that in 2016. We thought that 6-4 and four was the magic number. Looks like they're going to get there. We'll see. Hellgate, once again, this week is kind of a bye week for the forfeit. And then they host Flathead on future Spartans night and senior night uh, on October 28th. We'll have that for you on Spartan Live. I'm Kenson Cross. I'm Cole Johnson. And we thank you for watching. <laughs>Hi, I'm Kate. Did you know that you can vote before Election Day in Montana? Just come down to the fairgrounds between October 12th and November 7th to get your voter registration completed, receive a ballot, and even get an I Voted sticker. If you have changed your last name, moved, or had any other update to your personal information, you'll need to change this with the Elections Office in order to be eligible to vote. Some of the perks of visiting the Election Center before Election Day are plenty of parking, friendly staff, speedy service, and even extended hours on Saturdays and evenings. For more information on our hours, please visit MissoulaVotes.com. It takes less than five minutes to complete everything that you need in order to be election ready. Visit us anytime to quickly receive your ballot. If you can't find time to stop in before election day, that's okay. Montana also has same day voter registration. I have to warn you though, we're expecting a record number of voters this election season, so the lines are gonna be really long on election day. Save yourself the hassle and come in before November 8th. Coming down to the fairgrounds is a great way to avoid lines on election day. So why wait? Don't register late. Hey, we're Hi. back. We're back. Thank you very much, Cole and Kempstead for Wake Up Sports, yes. giving us the highlights for the football weekend. Yes, it. Thanks. Go sports. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's what's wrong. Okay. Oh, what's wrong, uh, Scott? The audio is like all over the place. Okay. Wow. It's a little, there, a little better, maybe. Is that better? Is that better at home, you guys? Is that better? Okay, that's much better. We have a live studio <laughs> audience today, and he's giving us a double thumbs up, so yeah. I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, Harold, he just got married here, yes. and he uh, wanted to stop by before he moved uh, to Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yes. Harold and oh, is one of ASAP's good friends, and Harold and his wife Francine, right? Yep. Is that her name? Yeah. Yep. Were able to get married on the ASAP Cafe yep. a couple weeks ago. They're now the Foxes, right? The Foxes? Yep. So now they're back from their honeymoon, yep. and they're gearing up to start their new life together. Which is awesome. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, hey, that's great. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love love. I'm glad. Yes. Yay. That's it. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we had to plug them at least once. We have, of course, yeah, we had to plug them. Yeah. 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 Um, but of course, uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're, um, we'll be back. We'll be back on Wednesday. <laughs> we'll be back on Wednesday. Um, and we'll if have you're interested some... in finding out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com/slash Wake Up Missoula. You can also like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can check us out at MCAT TV Missoula. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. Page, you can like us on that and to find out more information or to watch us live online just go to mcat.org but of course uh this wednesday i'll have your city council report which will be talking about a 60 dollar six 60 million dollar uh road um repair redevelopment project wow, so i'll talk a little bit more about that and more from your city council report this yep. wednesday uh, yeah. but of course uh thanks for joining me everybody mm -hmm. um uh especially a shout out to kimson cole and of course uh, our very old uh harold harold our live studio <laughs> audience and, yes. ASAP out of nine. <laughs> so for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McAvoy. Here's ASAP out of nine, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday.